What's up, Divas and Debo? So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. We're about to dish into this, you know, Real Talk Wednesday. So get your wine, your popcorn, whatever it is you guys want to eat and snack on for this Real Talk. So I don't really have a lot of them because one of them is just an update. Um, may nobody send me nothing like that, hunties. But anyway, just an update on me. I'm doing really well. It, it, you know what? It has gotten hotter out here in Arizona. It's like 96 degrees right now, okay? And yes, it's only April, 96 degrees. So it's about to turn up, like meaning the heat is about to really turn up. So a girl is about, a bitch is about to stay in the house. Like for real, I'm a, well, I always stay in the house anyway, but I'm about to really stay in the house. Got used to, I love the bedroom set now. It actually brings out me more. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I did love the bright colors, the pinks and stuff behind me. And I do miss those. I love those too. But I find that this particular furniture in this particular background now just makes editing so much easier. You can see my colors more and my skin or my clothing or the wig. So I do like this. Plus, it's so grown up, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You know, I did get tired of people asking me, why are you doing your video in Mumsy's room or your daughter's room? Like, okay, I can like pink too, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I like pink. I do like pink. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, um, nothing really popping. Nothing really has been like taken off except for my goddamn weight. So I gained like six pounds, okay? And I'm really not too happy about that. Um, and this was all due to me going back to New York. I gained like six pounds and I did stop going to the weight doctor because I just wanted to do this on my own without any type of help from any physician or person. I just really wanted to do this whole weight loss thing on my own. So that is the one thing. Normally when I would go, I would honestly feel so ashamed if I gained a pound so that was my motivation for going for like a whole year straight every week because I felt ashamed every time I would gain the pounds. So it helped me to stay like at a certain weight or lose weight. And being that I haven't been doing that, I feel like I'm slacking. You know, like I do smoke, you know, smoke. I smoke weed. OK, I smoke trees. I do. Um, and, you know, when you do that, you like to have a couple of snacks on hand. So it don't really help me none. So I do have to stop and doing that. And. Okay, honestly, I got tired of eating fucking salads every day, like for the past eight, nine months. I got tired of it. So I stopped eating those, and you know, because I just got tired of eating healthy every single day, all day long. Like it was really good in the beginning of those, all those months, but then it started boring the shit out of me. So I went back to eating like regular stuff. And then now I went back to eating salads and good food again. So, you know, I went back to doing what I was doing and it's not like I'm losing weight like that but you know I did lose three pounds because I was actually I did gain let me tell you I gained like a total of nine pounds and so then I do weigh I, I lost four pounds so you know what I'm saying I will get there eventually like you know what I'm saying I'm not trying to kill myself with weight loss but I just want to be at a certain weight like I don't really want to lose any weight anymore I just want to lose like my stomach area like I like everything else like seriously like all for for this past year over a year now because I started this weight loss journey back in 2017 in September so you know or August so I lost a lot of weight and um it was like a struggle for me to keep it off. Like, you know, I would go back and forth, but my body would change. Like my body form would change. Like I lost my ass and stuff. And, and then it was, it was there. I didn't lose it, but it was smaller. And then it felt like it got smaller. And then it seemed like after my surgery, um, for my hysterectomy, I gained some weight back, but I gained it back. And then I started doing my squats again. And so then my butt got bigger again. So I, you know what I'm saying? And it's just due to me gaining weight. And it seems like when I'm gaining the weight back this time, that it's not going to like appear as much. It's just going to my backside, my ass. So let's just leave it at that. But I did notice like, to me, I feel like my face got a little bit chubbier with that pounds that I gained. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just me. You know, you guys could probably feel like I'm just being paranoid, but that's just how I feel. Um, but that's the only thing that's really been like going on. I'm like so happy and 
I'm like in total happiness these days. Like ever since I went back to New York because me and my husband are together every single day. So I'm like in total bliss. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it it wasn't hard to get used to at all just being with him every day. Like, you know, because it's just like we've always been together every day. So I'm just happy that he's home and we get to see each other all the time. I get to wake up next to him. I need to go to sleep next to him after, you know, you know, we go to sleep eventually. But, you know, I'm so happy. Like, I don't know. You know, you 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 leave a person and you feel like it's always the best thing to do, especially if you have like these complications in your relationship, and then you feel like you know leaving them is the best thing to do. And sometimes it can be temporarily or sometimes permanently. But for me, it wasn't permanently. It was definitely temporarily, though I wish it would have never had been. But you know, you get to learn the person more sometimes when you separate from them, and you get to cherish them more, and you get to grow more with them. So. I think like even though I wish it wouldn't have been, it was the best thing for us because it's allowed us to mature a lot and get ourselves together. So that's like the really best thing that has happened in this relationship. We've been together over 20 years, okay? So I can never see myself without him. Like he's like everything to me. So you know what I'm saying? It just makes me happy to be able to be back at home with him. And then we do things together, you know what I'm saying? It's just weird that I'm not on the phone anymore. So like my phone usage my battery life lasts forever <laughs> okay and i don't really text that much because um you know he's here but i do still text him like you know little sexy pics even though he's downstairs or whatever i still do that because you know you don't want to like stop doing certain things but yeah i'm like totally happy i'm really really happy um you know what i'm saying it shit like that you know the only thing that i'm pissed off about is my son wuzzle you guys know he'll be 21 in june and he stayed getting himself in some shit and once again i have to be his savior and that part is really tiring and it's like you know with, with these teenagers well he's not a teen he's 20 but i'm gonna just say to me he's still a teen you know what I'm saying? They just don't get it sometimes. It's like you constantly tell them something for their own good. And it goes in one ear and goes out the other. And sometimes it don't even penetrate the ear. That shit got like a block, a shield. And that shit just bounced the fuck off. It don't even penetrate in the ear for them to even have heard you. And it's like when you tell them something constantly, constantly. And then when you tell them like the hardest way, they get in their feelings. So they get in their feelings about the shit. And whatever you just said to them that is going to benefit them. They not even paying attention to that. They're in their feelings about, well, you came at me and said it like this to me. Like, you were thinking about the wrong thing. And it's like, you know, I don't know how many times I have had to tell him things for his own good. And, like, you just don't get it. And now you in, like, some more trouble. And I have to, once again, get you out of the trouble that your ass is the fuck in. Like, literally get you out. So... That's just the one thing that I'm pissed up about. Like, I really wish that these kids would just grow up the fuck already because it seems like the, out of five of my kids, the most maturest ones that I have is my 16 and my 11-year-old. May will actually be 17 at the end of this month, the last day of this month. She'll be 17, and she's an amazing teenager, like, for real. And Mumsy is just so fucking crafty in her little moody ways, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I really wish that they would mature because I'm not guaranteed to be here tomorrow. Or the rest of today. But after a while, even if I am here today or tomorrow, a bitch going to get tired. And mentally, I'm not going to be there with them. I'm not going to be there financially either. I'm just going to say, you know what? Figure it out on the fuck on your own. And then you know what? When you do tell them that, they get in their feelings like, hey, she's not on my side. She doesn't love me. You know what I'm saying? Because I know you guys have probably heard that from your own kid. You don't love me. Mommy doesn't love me because she yelled at me. She won't help me do this. Like, Man, listen, if you could constantly and honestly say that I don't love you, then your little black ass would be dead and buried some fucking where, okay, at the hands of me. But obviously, you're still breathing, and I'm still trying to help you out of the shit that you do. And regardless of how I may combat you or say shit to you, that does not mean I don't love you. But, you know, I don't know. When I was younger, I didn't really act like this, like these kids do today. Not at all. I was hard-headed, of course, and I wanted a boyfriend and shit like that, but. The shit that they do today just be having me all fucking conflicted. Like, I'd be so conflicted. I'd just be like. Sometimes you just got to sit there. Sometimes you just really have to just sit there and let it all play out because you be out of the energy. Like, I've lost so much energy from dealing with them. It's like, okay, enough. 
I'm just going to leave you alone. Now you can figure this shit out on your own. And then that part of you really hates to leave them alone and make them survive out there. But it's like, if I constantly keep saving your ass, you're never going to learn how to swim on your own. So I'm going to just let you drown just a little bit. And then I'll come save you. Maybe. But if your ass really do go down and sink, then I don't know what to tell you. Because a bitch like me really can't swim neither. So, you know. But other than that, yeah, everything is all good. Happiness, you know. What more can I say? I'm totally, like, in, like, a honeymoon stage that I think I'm going to be on for the rest of my fucking life. You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously. <sighs> yes. So, we're going to get into this real talk, you guys. If you have a real talk that you would like me to talk about, please send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. You can put in the subject line, real talk. So, that way, I know it's a real talk. And if you want to change the names of the people that you're talking about, you know, you talking shit about or yourself, you can go ahead and let me know. And if you don't tell me that you changed the names, 99.9% .9 of the time, baby zaddies, like Maury would say, I will change it for you, okay? So, let's get into this real talk. Okay, guys, so first of all, this is this was a message that I received, an email that I received yesterday. So first of all, I want to give a huge birthday shout out because I don't want to forget. But on the 25th of this month, everybody's birthday is in April. One of my lovely, lovely people here, one of my lovely young people will be turning 17. Okay. So I want to say a big happy birthday shout out and love to Markel. Okay. First of all, first, I want to say thank you so much for supporting my channel and also sending me an email for real talk. Like, I think this was like a couple of years ago. I will read you the email, but I want to send Markel a special shout out for their birthday on April 25th, because I know what it means just to be able to hear even happy birthdays from someone through the computer, regardless if you know them, you know what I'm saying? I want you to have a birthday that is amazing. You and my daughter, Nay, will be both turning 17 this year, this month of April. So all you are is five days older than her, which is amazing. So, you know, at this age, you're such young people. You should enjoy life and do the things that make you happy, especially if they're positive things. Definitely do those positive things that make you happy. You know what I'm saying? Never let anybody race, age, whatever, disappoint you or, you know, make you feel like lesser than such. You know what I'm saying? And I know at the age of 16, 17, 15, and 14, teenagers have it hard. You know, they do go through a lot of things in life and they have like this peer pressure. You know what I'm saying? They have all this peer pressure, which is unfortunate. And some of them can fall victim to the peer pressure. And I'm really happy and fortunate that my daughter, Nay, is not one of those. You know, she does her own thing. She goes to school and she's really educated and smart. And she's, she, she looks forward to her future and she plans her future out. So, you know, when you see a young child or a young kid that that age, you just really look at them and you you just like you're amazed. And just even from talking to a lot of these young people that email me that are in that age bracket, you know, what I'm saying it amazes me at how they have succeeded in life, like going to school, going to college, working and going to college and helping their parents. You know, at that age, I wasn't even thinking about going to college and helping my parents. I was just thinking about myself. And, you know, and when I see these very mature young people, it's just like, like, I always have like this, this hope, like, you know what, we still do have hope. We still do have young people out there that are willing to be mature, you know what I'm saying? And do the right thing. And so I think like, it's always important, like to mention them, to honor them and to just give them like that pat of encouragement or whatever and let them know like, hey, we got you. Regardless if we are blood relative, friend, family, or if we've never met each other personally, even if it's through via messages, I got you. So Markel, I want to send you a very special happy birthday shout out. I really sincerely do hope you enjoy your birthday to the utmost. You know what I'm saying? And if you're watching this message, I hope that you send me an email, okay? Because I would just like to still keep talking to you and just 
being able to help you in any way that I can, you know, even if it's a good ear to listen to. But Markel did write me an email and it says, hey, bro, I don't know if you remember me, but you did a video when I messaged you on advice on the whole school thing and the whole people look and the way people look at me as a Michael Jackson um, lookalike. I'm contacting you because I wanted to thank you for that video. And I know it's been so long, but I've been really busy. My mom isn't really in the picture. You know, it's rare to see her. So I try to keep it together and keep doing music with, and, um, and doing what I love, which is entertaining people and doing music. My birthday is this month on the 25th of April, and I'm turning 17. So it's a big day for me. I was wondering maybe when you make your next video, you could give me a birthday shout out or send me a birthday video message or something like that. I would greatly appreciate it. I figure since it's my birthday, you'll make the exceptions. But when you have time, no rush. I'll also be going to my senior um, year next year. So people and their drama is cut out and their ignorance is something I just won't fall for because it's stupid, you know. And I have, again, dreams of entertaining and speaking against the bad and just start programs and societies to help people have a safe place for them to visit, you know. But anyways, sorry for the rambling. Thank you again for everything. Sincerely love, Markel. So, you guys, I want you all to make sure to wish Markel a happy birthday. And see, still living up to those dreams and aspirations and still goals that they have set out for themselves. And I admire that because, like I said, a lot of young people don't really think too ahead of the future and then there are a lot that do so we always want to make sure that we you know let them know hey we appreciate what you're doing or hey I see what you done did and what you're doing and what your goals are and that you conquering and so happy birthday Markel and I hope you have an amazing birthday and make sure you hit me up and I'm still glad that you're doing the music and yes I do remember you I don't be forgetting much I might smoke a little bit but you know I don't be forgetting too much so on that note, make sure you wish Markel down below, Markel, M-A-R-K-E-L, a happy birthday. So that way they have like a nice birthday. You know what I'm saying? Everybody deserves to have a nice birthday. My birthday about to be coming up. Yeah, you know, I'll be 45. My husband's birthday was last Friday. And uh, my daughter Tati's birthday is the 19th of April. And then May's birthday is April 30th. My brother's birthday is April 16th. My other brother that really don't fuck with me because I don't fuck with him neither. Y'all know what I'm talking about. His birthday is April 12th. But, you know, it is what it is. And, yeah. So, let's go on to the next real talk. Okay, and this is an update. So this one, I can read you the original or, you know, I'll basically read you like the original update um, version. The I'm going to read you the first one. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but I'm going to read you guys some of it because this was only from like a few weeks ago, this um, real talk. Okay, let's see. Okay. So uh, back in March, um, a young lady, um, I don't remember what she said to call her, but okay, we're just going to call her Tina. Um, you can call me whatever you like, girl. I need advice. So my boyfriend has his own four bedroom house in a nice neighborhood. He has a great job and also is a good provider for his family as well. We have a baby on the way due in September. Thing is, we don't live together because his grown-ass siblings, two sisters, moved in with him and brought their grown-ass boyfriend slash husbands. Both of them each have three kids apiece that also live in the household that my boyfriend has. They work good jobs, but they don't pay my boyfriend any money. They don't even try to pay him half of the bills. Um, and when they do pay, it's only when they feel like it. They never wash their own kids or clean up after them or their kids. And the kids are always running around, breaking up things. They don't have a bedtime. Basically, she stated that, you know, they want to move in together, but she doesn't really know what to do. Every time she's over there, she's picking up, cleaning up after everyone. She don't want to be nobody's housemate. And so I did give her the advice to, listen, you pregnant. This is your time of happiness, bliss, non-stress. You don't supposed to be over there cleaning up after nobody else. But for one, you need to stick and step to your boyfriend and have a nice conversation with him about how he's allowing his own family to walk all over them okay the depreciation of his house is going to go down the drain these motherfuckers that's living with you making money and then they not paying listen that means that if you can make money and not pay me that means if you got yourself a nice savings account save the fuck up so now you can move out and get in your own shit that's what i'm just saying 
Okay. There's no other way around that. It's, it is what the fuck it is. You either going to pay or hit the doorway. So after the real talk video, she did give me an update video, which was two days ago. And I hope you guys remember it. If I remember to post it below, I will post it below so you can watch it. But it's um, called I Am Not a Housemaid. Um, update. Hey, April. We're just going to keep calling her Tina. I know I didn't go into details on everything just right because I was so upset with the child neglect going on in the house that I needed to get it out and I didn't want to make it too long because there is a lot I didn't speak on going on in my boyfriend's house. I know it probably didn't make sense to read and I'm sorry, April and the Divas. I got everything you were saying, sweetheart. I haven't been to my boyfriend's house in almost four weeks because the same old stuff is still going on there. His one sister and her baby daddy are still neglecting their children. The only difference is one of his sisters, the one with the husband, has stepped up. She has become the other sister's baby sister and maid because that bitch and her baby daddy don't want to watch their own kids. they rather work and go out, so they leave their kids off on her now. My boyfriend doesn't get involved too much anymore, which is good, but bad because he just lets the fuckery go on even longer. I can tell you from the last time I was there, the toddlers of the ancient sister were so dirty that they don't give them baths. Um, they don't bathe the children. They just let the kids sit around in shitty and pissy diapers all day to the point they take them off and throw their shit all over the place and cry for someone's attention. The eight-year-old and the seven-year-old had to clean up the piss and shit. I feel so bad for these kids. Her newborn still gets left in the living room by himself and he wakes up crying in the middle of the night and nobody comes to him until 30 minutes later if my boyfriend isn't home at that time the toddlers still sit up all hours of the night acting a fool and crying for attention from someone but nobody gets up to care for them the bitch is a disgusting mother honestly i once i have his this baby her ass can get hands whoa let me just read that a little bit better the bitch is a disgusting mother honestly when i have this baby her ass can get these hands. How'd that sound? I did have the talk with my boyfriend. I told him I just had had enough of it and he has to do something ASAP or else he'll lose me and the baby. He told me to give him a year to find a new house because in October of next year, he is getting rid of his current house. I told him if I move in with him, they can't come with him. The only one that is coming with us is his eight-year-old nephew. Poor baby is still taking care of the kids and still getting belittled. So hopefully when he is with me, I can save his future. But I'm not moving in with him, period, because I don't want my baby in a toxic situation because I have a feeling CPS will get called to that house soon. I also told my boyfriend that he needs to say something to his sister and her baby daddy about the shit they are doing and stop sitting around being mute because something bad is going to happen in that house. A child is going to hurt. A child, a child is going to get hurt. I already had to grab a bottle of cough medicine out of one of the baby's hands. What else is going to be next? A knife? I couldn't watch it go on anymore, so I haven't been back. It's just heartbreaking in that house. Hopefully something changes, but I don't think it ever will until my boyfriend puts his foot down. If not, I don't see us being together in the future. Love you, April. Wow. So I think it's a Tina, right? We're going to call it Tina. So basically that's the update on the situation. Um, Tina, you know, her baby's due in September. Her and her boyfriend's been together for a while. Her boyfriend's got his two sisters living at his house that he owns, okay? So I think he has either a four or five bedroom house. He has two sisters and each one of his sisters have three kids apiece. So that's two sisters with three kids each, which equals six children and two sisters makes eight plus the two sisters' boyfriend or baby daddies, which means that's 10. Okay, plus himself equals um, 11. Tina's boyfriend, we're going to call him Mark, makes 11 people. And also Mark has also taken um, custody of his another sister who is eight. So that makes 12. And when Tina does decide to come over and spend the night, that makes it 13 people in the household. So here's the thing. These grown ass people that are living with Tina's boyfriend, Mark, they got... One thing in common, and that's the same mother. But here's the one thing we don't have in common, a lot of things. You living in my house, you both got, both of his sisters and their baby daddies have good jobs. And they're not barely paying him. So when Tina finally did have the talk with her boyfriend and told him, listen, I'm not moving in with you until you get rid of your, your family. Because this fuckery has to stop. You have to stop. What did he say, her boyfriend say? Well, 
I'm just going to buy a new house in October. And I'm going to get rid of this house. First of all, that makes no sense. So it seems like to me that Tina's boyfriend, Mark, don't got no balls. And if he do, they like little tiny fucking raisins. And he ain't letting them shits hang. hang. Because I be damned if I got a home of my own. And I got my siblings living there and they not trying to help out. And all they doing is destroying that shit. You bitches to get the fuck out. And if you don't want to call me brother and sister no more, then that's good too. I'm cool with that too. We can see you when I see you. I don't go to family reunions, so I guess I won't see you. Okay. And I'm damn sure not inviting you over. So I guess all ties will be lost. There's no way that I'm going to allow my siblings who both have good jobs along with their three motherfucking children each, which means six motherfucking kids running around. They all little kids. I'd be damned. First of all, let me tell you this much. I love my sister. Thank God she don't have no kids of her own. I love my brother. He ain't got no kids. And my other brother, well, he ain't got no kids either because he don't swing that way. But I'm pretty sure he could adopt some. But, you know, his mind don't swing that way neither. So that's out of the, the agenda. But I love my siblings. Don't get me wrong. Regardless if I'm getting along with them or not. But if they got three kids, Listen, you can't come stay at my house for too long. Like, I might give you, like, a week. And I'm not... Some people may say, oh, that's not right. That's not right. But I'm not letting in nobody with a whole bunch of motherfucking kids come to my goddamn house and stay. Because I... First of all, I know y'all don't find this hard to believe, but I never even liked fucking children. Okay? Never liked kids. Never wanted kids. But then, you know, I ended up getting pregnant. And then I was like, I'm never having another kid again. Then I ended up getting pregnant again and again. And then the story goes on. So I do like kids. I do. But I like my old motherfucking kids, okay? Not saying that if y'all had me watch y'all kid that they would be unsafe. But let me just say this. Let that little motherfucker start acting up and trying to just irk my nerves. I will irk that little motherfucker's nerves right back, okay? Straight up, no filter. I'm not about to let anybody tolerate me, especially somebody that's underage and shit. I'm not about to let no little toddler, baby, teenager, whatever, young adult fucking irritate me. So I, I prefer you not to bring your motherfucking kids to my house. Plus, they always want to touch shit and they just want to do stuff. And, you know, you, you do tell them, but sometimes they could be so hard-headed. And listen, I have three grandsons and two of them are really hard-headed. The other one is only a few months old. So, you know, he don't really have no, you know, limit of being hard-headed. But the other two, they, they drive me motherfucking insane too, okay? And I got to pull up, the, I got to take away the grandma card sometimes and not be so nice. And just ape will have to hit me out with like, you, you about to, I know you four years old, you little motherfucker, but you are meeting April right now. This is me. I'm not my mom. This is who the fuck I really am. You know what I'm saying? And they don't like when they see that part of me. So I prefer you and your little motherfucking kids to stay over there. Okay. And then when you come visit, that's great. Come visit. And then we'll just make sure you, you go home. Okay. So he good for letting his two sisters with three kids each and they baby daddies moving. First of all, if you still with your baby daddy or your husband and you have children with him, bitch, you need to have your own place. He is a man. He can provide. And if both of you motherfuckers have two good jobs, then you both need to be in your own place of dwelling, not living with your fucking brother who doesn't have any children. Okay. But Tina got tired of going over there and being the maid service and seeing the filth and the chaos and all that bullshit. And so she hasn't been over there in four weeks. And now she's telling me that her boyfriend is like, well, he's going to get rid of that house. Okay, that's great. Get rid of the motherfucker. Hopefully you can get rid of it. But grow some motherfucking balls too and go ahead and tell your sisters and their baby daddies that it's time to go on about your business and rent your own place of dwelling. Me personally, their names are not on that lease, sweetheart. I would have them removed from the premises. You know, it's always like family. They all family always take the worst advantage of you. And it's it's so sad to say that, but it's the fucking truth. Family will be the ones that will rip you a new asshole and fuck you without you even knowing. It. Like they will violate you. Okay. And that's sad to say, but it's the truth. And like me personally, he's not even taking Tina seriously enough. Here she is. She's having a baby and he's going to tell her, well, I'm going to get rid of this house in October. First of all, I don't know if your boyfriend is smart like that, because just because you putting your house up for sale in October, doesn't mean that the motherfucker is going to sell in October. That shit could sit there for years and years and not get sold. It doesn't, 
It don't happen like that, honey. The, the, the best thing to do for him would be to tell him he needs to have a talk and remove them from the household ASAP. Why the fuck are you and your baby waiting to move in with him? Come on, man. This nigga need to grow some balls, straight up. I ain't never heard no lame ass shit like that a day in my life. Well, I'm just going to sell my house. That's like me saying, well, my kids, they still here. I'm going to just move out. I'm going to tell y'all motherfuckers to get the fuck out. Bottom line, if y'all don't want to speak to me no more, then let's stress for me, okay? I'm pretty sure you'll come around one day or another. And like I said, oh, you don't want to speak to me? That's fine, because I got four more kids that can speak to me. I don't care. Yes, that's what I say. Because then they get in their attitude. I'm not speaking to her. I don't care. That's cool. You don't want to speak to me. I got four more of you. You don't have to. Shit, I ain't no love lost. Straight up. So, you guys, that's about it for Real Talk. Tina, I thank you for the update because your boyfriend needs to grow some balls. I'm pretty sure you're aware of that. That's the reason why you don't want to move in with his fucking ass. He need to get it together. Sweetheart, I wouldn't even go over there and be tolerating none of the bullshit and foolishness at his sister's house. Let him go ahead and do what he needs to do. And if that's where he want to be and he want to keep constantly being irritated, then listen, let him constantly be keep ir being irritated. But when he keeps complaining to you about it, let him know you're not trying to hear it no more because you already tried to help him and he didn't do anything about it. So therefore, you don't want to be involved in it because the nigga like him is waiting till October to go out and get another house. Like, damn, people got it like that. And you think that the house is about to be sold? Them bitches will get the fuck up out of my house straight up. They all bring all type of rugs, roaches and shit and bugs in their house because they got these these dirty little motherfucking kids running around like they ain't got no heads. Like chickens with their heads cut off. Just running the fuck around. Yeah. So I'm going to go. I got a YouTube video to do, which is for a wig, a synthetic wig. Please don't ask me why I said YouTube video, because where else would it be for? Um, yes. I love you guys. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Thumbs this video up, girl. And I will see you soon. Uh, 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 uh,